Reliability Criteria for News Websites. This is joint work by Hendrik Heuer from the Center for Advanced Internet Studies in Bochum, Germany, and the University of Wuppertal, and Elena Leah Glassman from Harvard University. Misinformation played an important role in the COVID-19 pandemic, the 2021 United States Capitol attack, and the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Our research is motivated by the finding that many people find it challenging to distinguish reliable from unreliable information. This is a problem since unreliable information, sometimes also called misinformation, poses a threat to democracy and to people's health. Academically, Wardle distinguishes between seven types of misinformation and disinformation. Misleading content, false connection, false context, manipulated content, fabricated content that is 100% false, imposter content impersonating genuine sources, and satire. While applicable to all seven types, the reliability criteria for news websites presented in our paper are especially relevant for online websites that provide misleading content, false connection, false context, and manipulated content. This paper investigates reliability criteria. These criteria are intended to directly help news consumers assess the reliability of news websites they encounter on social media and through search engines. The criteria may also be helpful for those who operate social media platforms like TikTok, Facebook, and Telegram. For these situations, we hope our reliability criteria for news websites practice are a quick and empirically sound way to decide and explain why a given website may be unreliable. People's perception of the credibility of websites has been studied since the early 2000s. Based on a literature review of keywords such as reliability criteria and credibility criteria, we determined a list of criteria aimed at helping users distinguish reliable from unreliable news websites. Many lists of criteria include no explanation of how the criteria were determined or of their empirical basis. Two lists are particularly noteworthy because they are widely used. The Facebook tips in the NewsGuard criteria. The Facebook tips include the following instructions and questions. 1. Be skeptical of headlines. 2. Look closely at the URL. 3. Investigate the source. 4. Watch for unusual formatting. 5. Consider the photos. 6. Inspect the dates. 7. Check the evidence. 8. Look at other reports. 9. Is the story a joke? 10. Some stories are intentionally false. Guess it all empirically showed the effectiveness of the Facebook tips in the United States and India. These tips were included in a large-scale investigation by Arekar et al., who found that combining the tips with subtle prompts to think about accuracy improved the veracity of news people were willing to share. Another important example of reliability criteria are the NewsGuard criteria. NewsGuard is a rating system for news and information websites that is accessible via browser extensions and mobile apps. The NewsGuard criteria include 1. Does not repeatedly publish false content. 2. Gathers and presents information responsibly. 3. Regularly corrects or clarifies errors. 4. Handles the difference between news and opinion responsibly. 5. Avoids deceptive headlines. 6. Website discloses ownership and financing. 7. Clearly labeling advertising. 8. Reveals who's in charge. 9. The site provides names of content creators along with either contact or biographical information. Despite their wide usage, the information on how the criteria were determined is limited. With this paper, we provide criteria that are based on how experts and end users evaluate news websites. To help users identify misinformation and to inform the design and development of interventions against misinformation, we answered three research questions. The first research question is, what reliability ratings do end users and experts provide for news websites? For this question, we examine how end users and experts assess the reliability of news websites through an empirical investigation that combines elements of contextual inquiry, think aloud, and semi-structured interviews. The second research question is, what criteria do end users and experts apply to assess whether news websites are reliable? We present criteria based on our empirical work that could be used by future news consumers to help them assess the reliability of news websites. The third research question is, what differences between end users and experts can be observed? 
For this, we compare the similarities and differences of end users and experts with respect to identifying misinformation. To observe which reliability criteria are actually applied in practice, we studied professional journalists as experts and politically diverse laypeople as end users. With knowledge of how news is produced, professional journalists are experts in assessing the reliability of news websites and, in fact, checking claims. End users have less experience with how news is produced. By looking at both experts and end users, we identify criteria that are used by experts that are within end users' abilities and that debunk common end users' choices that are less helpful for identifying reliable information. Our focus on political diversity is influenced by the finding that a person's partisanship and political stance have been shown to influence their assessment of news reliability. A unique aspect of our work is covering the political spectrum in two countries, Germany and the United States of America. As end users, we recruited a politically diverse group of 23 elected politicians from one of the 16 state parliaments of the Federal Republic of Germany. We recruited 23 of the 84 elected representatives, that is, more than a quarter of representative participated. The distribution of party affiliation of the end users is almost proportional to that of the last election. 15 of the end users were male and 8 were female, similar to the percentage of females in the state parliament of Bremen. The sample of end users was diverse in terms of the highest education completed. We used two distinct newspaper sampling strategies to recruit 20 journalists working for U.S.-based English-language newspapers. The first was based on readership, looking at the 10 most widely circulated newspapers in the U.S. in 2019. We recruited seven experts from these newspapers. The second strategy was based on political alignment, allowing us to include a politically diverse collection of news organizations. Using a meta-ranking of news websites by Groupie et al., we identified reliable newspapers classified as left, center, or right. We sampled seven reliable newspapers identified as politically left or center left, seven politically in the center or least biased, and eight politically right or center right. Eleven of 20 experts identified as male and nine as female. We examine how end users and experts assess the reliability of news websites through an empirical investigation that combines elements of contextual inquiry, think aloud, and semi-structured interviews. During the sessions, each participant evaluated the reliability of three purported news websites. Since our participants were located in two different countries, we customized the news sites for each country. The politically diverse end users, all German speakers, were presented with three German news sources, while the experts were presented with three news sources in English from the U.S. All of the sources had been rated by reputable external news analysts as unreliable. We focused on entire websites, not individual news articles. With far fewer websites than articles, providing reliability criteria for entire websites saves time, as users do not have to evaluate individual news articles and claims. The cost of starting a news website is also higher than the cost of publishing and promoting individual articles. These criteria also mean it is not necessary to engage with individual claims in a story to explain why a website is unreliable and they can support users before an article containing misinformation is even created and be integrated more easily into social media platforms. The procedure of each session was the following. First, participants were asked whether they had personally used the website. Then they were asked to freely explore the website in their own browser at their own pace. We encouraged them to describe the reasoning behind their actions and decisions. Think aloud. Participants were allowed to read as many articles as they wanted, to visit all sections of the website, and to open other websites like search engines, social media websites, and encyclopedias. While exploring the website, participants were regularly asked whether they felt comfortable providing a rating. If they answered affirmatively, they were asked about their rating. If not, they were allowed to continue browsing. Reviewing an individual website took around five minutes. After participants provided their rating on a five-point Likert scale, they were asked to elaborate on their rationale for the rating. Finally, participants were asked whether any information that would have helped them make their decisions was missing during the study. We identified 11 criteria that were used to determine the reliability of online information. Content, political alignment, writing style, authors, self-description, 
professional standards, advertisements, ownership, sources, reputation, and website design. In gray, we indicate the percentage of experts that use the criterion. In white, we indicate the percentage of laypeople that use the criterion. Overall, we found strong similarities between the two groups. Even though they reviewed different news sources in different languages and came from different countries and political backgrounds, we identified four criteria with little difference between end users and experts. Political alignment, ownership, content, and reputation. Note that content and political alignment are the two most frequently used criteria. We see this as corroboration of the ecological validity of the criteria, as these criteria are frequently invoked by experienced news producers and are within end users' abilities. Other criteria were considered helpful by one group, but not the other. The top five criteria for end users were advertisements, content, writing style, political alignment, and ownership, while the top five for experts were authors, content, political alignment, self-description, and professional standards. Based on our brainstorming of ways to deceive users, we identify criteria for which manipulation is difficult. The first such criterion is the content covered on a website. As our empirical material showed, if a website spreads right-wing conspiracy theories or anti-Semitic content, this is hard evidence that a website is unreliable. Another aspect of the content criterion is whether only one side of an issue is represented. If an unreliable website tries to optimize for this criterion, for example, by providing a balanced account that considers all sides of a discussion, this would improve the website and decrease its unreliability. Another less manipulable criterion is a source's political alignment. The featuring of only certain political actors or ideas by a news website is hard evidence that the site is unreliable. A particularly useful and especially hard to forge aspect of political alignment is who is sharing links to a website on social media platforms. Since this is beyond the control of a website, it is difficult to manipulate. Which authors write for a source is another criterion that is difficult to manipulate. With available search engines, it is comparatively easy to research whether authors exist and have received proper training, and whether the content and opinions shown on a website are consistent with the author's prior work. Another important criterion that is difficult to manipulate is whether a website adheres to professional standards. This can be assessed by seeing if a website clearly distinguishes between opinions and facts and presents different sides of a story. As our investigation showed, this can be done based on a topic that a user is already familiar with. The sources named by a website can be easily checked, allowing the information provided to be easily verified. And the sources used directly connect to the criterion of reputation, which is also difficult to manipulate. A reliable third party like Wikipedia or Snopes voting to classify a source as unreliable can be considered hard evidence of that unreliability, as it would be difficult to manipulate such third party assessments. The table shows that some of the criteria we identified in practice are frequently covered in prior work, while others are rarely included. Frequently included criteria are content, writing style, professional standards, sources, and website design. Criteria covered by only one or two other lists include authors, self-description, advertisements, ownership, and reputation. We are the first to describe political alignment, which is surprising since it is one of the most frequently used criteria in our investigation. The largest overlap is between our criteria and those of NewsGuard, covering seven of the 11 criteria we identified. Six of the 11 were also covered by Bhuyan et al. Our empirical studies showed that criteria like writing style and website design, which are frequently included in criteria catalogs, are more frequently used by end users than by experts. In the paper, we provide detailed qualitative results on each of these criteria and discuss how they can be implemented in socio-technical interventions. You find more information in our paper titled Reliability Criteria for News Websites. Thank you for your attention.